What an incredible show we have lined up for you tonight. As promised last month, Peggy Hentz, founder and director of Red Creek Wildlife Center, is here to answer all our questions concerning finding sick, injured, orphaned wild animals, including wildlife babies. At this time, I'd like to welcome back Peggy Hentz. As I said before, founder and director of Red Creek Wildlife Center, a place where wonderful things go on with wildlife rehabilitation. Welcome back to the show, Peggy. Thank you, Scott. Peggy, we're going to be talking about your brand new book here in a minute, but before we do, we'd like to learn a little bit about the author. Would you please tell the home viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got so interested in animal rehabilitation? Oh, well, I grew up in Schuylkill County, and a, a baby blue jay fell out of a nest when I was 15 years old. There were no rehabilitators at that time, and I ended up raising it and I was hooked. Would you give us a brief overview of Red Creek Wildlife Center? Tell us what the, what the place is all about. Sure. Red Creek Wildlife Center was founded in 1991. It's a wildlife rehabilitation center and our goal is to take in injured, orphaned and sick wildlife with the result of getting them back out into the wild where they belong. Uh, we take in approximately 600 animals a year of all species of Pennsylvania wildlife. Uh, would you say that you specialize in any particular animal? We do all species, but uh, my personal specialty is birds of prey, specifically great horned owls and, and other species of Pennsylvania owl. But uh, we do take all species of Pennsylvania wildlife. Let's talk a little bit about your new publication called Help, I Found an Animal. And we might have the cover art for this, I don't know. Maybe we can hold this up. Maybe I could hold this up too. Peggy, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about this. Oh, there it is. I hope I found an animal is like a wildlife rehabilitator in your pocket. Um, it's an extension of our education program to help more wildlife. Every animal that we take care of is one animal. Every time we go out to the public and do a program, we help people learn how to take care of animals that they find. This has the potential to take that message uh, throughout North America and uh, it's, it's a guide book, a dichotomous key or a flow chart of what to do when you find an animal that will co come to a specific answer which is best for the animal and safest for the person finding them. And this book will help uh, all of us make much better choices and save uh, baby animal lives. Right. We're, our hope is everybody keeps one in the glove compartment of their car, then they've got it at home and they've got it on the road. They can uh, refer to it any time they find wildlife in distress, whether it's a baby or an adult. I love the way it's written. I, I, I found out on the preview that it's like 80, and I'm not sure I'm exactly right there, but, but very tiny chapters. And, mm -hmm. and it's not boring because you cover each subject and it moves along very well. Yeah, it's, it's a, a manual, an information manual, rather than a, you know, a, an interesting read or a, a novel read. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have some uh, very special guests with us tonight. And Peggy, I'm going to let you do the honors here of introducing them to the home viewers. Well, it kind of gives you an idea of what we do. These are our very first babies of the year at Red Creek. They came in last night. And they are a litter of baby squirrels. Squirrels are being born right now. And uh, this is the first animal that most people find this time of year. Peggy, what were the circumstances under which you uh, procured these babies? These came from Berks County, Wilmersdorf actually. Uh, the, there was a tree trimmer trimming a tree and the nest was in a leaf nest out on one of the limbs and the limb was cut off and the babies fell to the ground. The property owner was extremely upset. 
she called and she did the right thing. She put them in a box out at the base of the tree, giving mom a chance to pick them up and uh, find another place to take them. But by sunset, she had not, and they were cold. And so the property owner had them delivered to us, and we've been nursing them all night long. What kind of special care will these babies require? Baby wildlife needs specific care. Um, they have to be kept at a, at a perfect temperature, humidity. Their formula that they, they drink, you can't just feed them like dog or cat formula. You have to give them formula which is specific to squirrels, has the same protein uh, carbohydrate ratio as squirrels. Um, they have to be weighed every day, given milk volume consistent with their stomach capacity. It, it's a, a very scientific endeavor. How long will you keep these animals? Their eyes, they're about a little over a week old. Their eyes will open when they're about six weeks old and they'll be released between three and four months old. So they'll be with us until June, July. Incredible. Thank you so much for bringing them along. And it was most ironic that your first babies came in last night. Nine o'clock last night. Oh, great. What are some common mistakes people make when they find babies like this? We actually have brought with us uh, some pictures of common wildlife scenarios. If we could see them, we could. There you go. Oh, great. Well, squirrels are being born right now, but another animal that's also hatched out is the great horned owl. Um, the babies hatch out in February. And oh, the next one is a young one. It's on the ground. And a lot of times these guys end up falling out of their nest, ending up on the ground, and they're not in trouble. Uh, the first thing that grows up is their feet, and their feet are extremely powerful. Great horned owls have up to 1,500 pounds of pressure per square inch in their feet. And these babies can take care of themselves. Um, they're not in danger from cats, most dogs, except maybe a very large one. People find them, think they're in trouble, pick them up and take them home, and they're not. Um, they really should just be left alone. Yeah, I've seen these personally in the woods, and they, they hop around, and the way they carry their wings makes them mm -hmm. look like they are in trouble. Yeah, it looks like, uh, and because they're so large, people think it's an adult bird in trouble, and their horns start out as little bumps, and it looks like they've got a head injury, and people make mistakes and pick them up and end up kidney kidnapping them from their parents. And this would be in the pre-fledgling stage, yes. obviously? Well, they come down out of the nest from four to six weeks old, but they can't fly until they're three, three and a half months old. That's over a month on the ground that they can't fly. And that's when they get themselves into trouble because of human intervention, obviously. Correct. Okay. Now, here's some baby squirrels a little older. Um, one of the things we try to do is we try to keep them wild, and we'll rack feed them once their eyes open. The less handling that we do, the better chance that they have of, of not walking up to people and not becoming humanized. And squirrels are found this time of year. Squirrels are one of the exceptions to finding a baby animal. You rarely ever see a baby squirrel in trouble because they don't leave the nest until they look like little adults. At this age, they wouldn't have even left the nest yet. It's very rare to see a baby squirrel. When you do come across one, there's usually a problem. One of the most common scenarios is people find a baby bunny or bunnies in a nest. They didn't know that they were there and they'll dig them up, they'll look at them and now they think, wow, I touched them, mom's gonna reject them. And so they take them in the home, they start to try to raise them because they think that they've interfered. And uh, touching a baby animal does not make the mother reject them. It doesn't happen with any animal, and it's a fallacy. But you can find out if the mother comes back. In the next slide, it kind of shows you take a piece of yarn and loosely mm -hmm. make an X over top of the nest sometime before dark. Check it again after the sun comes up in the morning, because mom only comes during the night once or twice and feeds them. And if the yarn's been moved, mom's been back, all is well, leave them alone. Baby bunnies leave the nest when they are very tiny. They're only like four or five inches long. They are camouflaged very well, but they're clumsy. 
and they will not run away from you and people can walk right up to them and pick them up and they think that they're, they've been abandoned, that they're in trouble. What they're doing is they're just hiding and they should be left alone. Um, you can, I think in the next slide, yeah, here's how you can age them. If they are three quarters the length of a dollar bill, let them alone. If their eyes are open and they're, they're able to hop around, they're on their own, they are tiny, but mom is no longer taking care of them. Another baby often found alone, and the reason is, same with the bunnies, baby fawn, baby bunnies, their scent glands haven't developed yet. They don't put off an odor. Predators can't smell them. Mom doesn't want to leave her smell with them, so she will, she'll leave them for long periods of time and only return for short times to feed them and then leave them alone. People find them, don't see mom, think that they've been abandoned. Um, we can rehab rehabilitate fawn. There was a time when we couldn't, and uh, we've been very successful at rehabilitating and releasing fawn. The one, oh, that's okay. Um, another baby, oh, the, the deer in, that's closest to us was a, a really unusual case. His mother was hit by a car and uh, he suffered from a cesarean section by automobile. About a week before he was supposed to have been born, he was premature. He came in and you could see right through his ears and his, and his hooves and he did very well. Another baby often found alone are, are morning doves. People think of baby birds and the parents have to feed them constantly. Same as fawns and uh, bunnies. They only get fed two, three times a day and mom leaves them alone. And the best thing to do is to leave them alone. You'll often even find them on the ground because they'll nest on the ground. Baby opossums are an exception. They're never without their mother until they're about six inches long without the tail, if you find a baby opossum, uh, it's in trouble. Another animal, never without its parents, baby ducks and baby geese, also like turkeys and pheasants. You never see them alone. If you find one by itself, it needs help, it needs to come in, it's in trouble. Baby songbirds, very common. People find them and they try to feed them and they often will die. They need extremely special care. One of the most common scenarios is a baby will fall out of the nest or an entire nest will fall. And I believe the next picture shows we actually rebuild nests. We will take a wicker basket, hang it up in a tree, plop the baby back in there or an entire nest of babies. And mom is very accepting. As long as she can hear her babies, it doesn't even have to be the exact same location in the tree. It can be in the next tree. Um, just get those babies out of harm's way and she'll come back and she'll feed them again. People need to be extremely careful when they're picking up wildlife. Uh, many species of wildlife carry diseases and in this case with baby skunks, it can be rabies, also with raccoons and any warm-blooded mammal can be carrying the virus and they have to be extremely careful that they handle the animals in such a way that they don't come in contact with any viruses. Never handle a wild animal without gloves, or better yet, if you do need to, to capture one because it's in trouble, put a box over top of it and slide a board underneath so you never touch the baby. This picture shows three different squirrels. The two on the outside were fed properly. They were fed a, a squirrel specific formula. The one in the middle, some people had taken care of for two weeks and fed it human milk formula, Similac. And believe it or not, the one in the middle is older than the other two. And it shows how they don't develop properly if they're not fed the right nutrition. Unfortunately, the one in the center expired. It didn't, it didn't make it. Peggy, we're going to shift gears just a little bit here, and um, I know from reading your incredible uh, website that volunteers are important to you up at Red Creek. I think you had something like 50 animals over the wintertime that volunteers helped you with. Yes. 
What would you say would be the major difference between being a volunteer at Red Creek versus being a volunteer <coughs> at the Humane Society of Berks County? Well, the goal is the same, to save the lives of animals, but um, if you're working for the Humane Society, you're working with dogs, cats, you're working with pets, and you want them to be friendly with people, wildlife volunteers, the, the goal is exactly the opposite. We want to keep them wild and get them back out there. We don't play with them. We don't get to cuddle them and noach them. Um, we have to care for them from a distance. All of this wonderful work you do up at Red Creek obviously takes funding. Where do your resources come from? Uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, we do receive donations from the public and we go out to schools and clubs and we will do educational programs. We'll take with us a great horned owl, a turkey vulture, a red tailed hawk and whoever else is in a good mood that day. And we'll do an hour program and we do get paid for that. And all of that funds Red Creek and now the book. Um, hopefully that will ha add some income to Red Creek Wildlife Center. I'd love to know, and, and you've already touched on this with the pictures, but let's talk about the impact that human intervention obviously has on wildlife babies. Would you agree with me if I said that uh, most animals that you handle are suffering not as a result of natural occurrences? Oh, most definitely. Um, people are the cause of wildlife coming in. And my best example is a baby squirrel, like we had today, falling out of a tree. Uh, if a baby squirrel falls out of a tree, it ends up on the soft forest floor. Mom usually com comes down, retrieves it, puts it back in the nest. We don't get those squirrels. They're not in trouble. The ones we get are the ones that fall out of the tree and hit the sidewalk that man put there. Or uh, a cat or a dog attacked and, and brought home. And just like with the great horned owls, uh, obviously the best thing to do with those owls is just to leave them alone. With owls, yes. With every animal, it's different. Mm -hmm. You really need to know the background of that animal and their nesting behavior and what's normal so you know whether or not to interfere. That's why this book's so important for exactly. all of us. Exactly. Why I need to get one and put it in my glove compartment. Exactly. Uh, some people feel, I'm sure, that one should allow n Mother Nature to take its course. Mm -hmm. Isn't rehabilitation interfering with wildlife? Actually, I like to refer, I like to think of it as uninterfering because most of the animals that we get in come in because of human interference already. And what we're doing is trying to get them back to square one, get them back out into the wild where they belong. I always heard as a kid that if you touch a baby bird or a baby bunny, that its mother will reject it. Is that true? I grew up with that, that too. And uh, it's a fallacy. It's an old wives' tale. And that fallacy has injured more baby animals than anything else other than cats and dogs running loose. Um, because a lot of people keep animals that otherwise could be returned to the parents. Um, let's talk some more about deer. Yeah. Fawn season is approaching. We did take a look at some fawns there with, uh, in the slideshow. What else can you tell us about fawn season coming up? Uh, fawn are usually born May and June. Uh, the mothers leave them alone. They're often found alone. And people call us up and they want to know if it's in trouble. Here's how to know if a baby fawn is in trouble. If it is walking up to you incessantly going bah, bah, it's probably in trouble. If it is found with its dead mother, or if it has fly or fly eggs on it, or if it has an obvious injury. Other than that, absolutely leave them alone. Don't move them, don't touch them. Just be thankful that you got to see nature at its finest. What things can people do every day to help wildlife? First and most important, Keep your pets under control and teach your children a hands-off respect for wildlife, a do not touch scenario. Um, those are the two most important things that people can do proactively. Um, a lot of other animals come in because of car accidents and window strikes and, and there's different things that can be done in different circumstances, but teach your children respect and a respect at a distance keep your dogs and your cats under control. What about people raising babies themselves or keeping them as pets themselves? 
first of all, it's illegal. You cannot possess a wild animal for any reason, if, even if you're trying to help it, um, unless you're just picking it up to get it to a wildlife rehabilitator. Rehabilitation is a science, and to take an animal home would be the same as you finding somebody who was just in a car accident and taking them home and giving them chicken soup instead of taking them to the hospital. You really don't have a right to do it, and you don't want to guess with a life. You also can endanger and expose yourself to parasites, diseases, and injury, not only you, but your family and your pets. Would you talk about your licensing a little bit and the difference between your licensing and the licensing that we do not have at the Humane Society of Berks County to deal mm -hmm. with these animals? We're not licensed for domestics. We're licensed for wildlife. Right. Um, we're licensed under the Pennsylvania Game Commission and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that we can take in birds ma and mammals that are native to Pennsylvania. Um, our, we must work with a, a veterinarian and unless you are a licensed wildlife rehabilitator, you cannot legally take in wildlife. Well, I just saw the big card there. We have about three minutes to go. Ooh. Talk um, briefly about your education program. Uh, like I said, we will, everything we do is education and everything we do is surrounding helping animals. Um, we educate people every day when they call us with information and that's one way we can teach one person. And we go out to schools and we'll talk to large audiences and we'll teach them about wildlife and that helps them and it ultimately helps the animals and then the book hopefully will carry that even further and we can spread that message which will help more animals. Well I'm sure all the home viewers out there would like to find out how they can access you up at Red Creek. Uh, you, can, you can access our website at redcreekwildlifecenter.com. You can also call us at 570-739-4393. Do we, there it is. Ah, yes, that's our, that's our card. Um, but yeah, it's redcreekwildlifecenter.com. Gorgeous card. Well, um, we're just about out of time. And I'd like to thank our media sponsors, if I could please, for helping to promote animals needing homes. I'm talking about BCTV, Channel 69 News, Comcast, The Reading Eagle, the Merchandiser, Berksmont Newspapers, and 107.5 Frank FM. My guest this evening has been Peggy Hentz from Red Creek Wildlife Center, speaking about wildlife rehabilitation and her brand new book called Help, I Found an Animal. Peggy, thanks so much for stopping by and speaking so expertly about all of these fascinating topics. Thank you for having me. And thank you everybody for joining us, and we hope to see you again next month April 9th, I believe, is the date when I'm sure there will be lots of talk about our upcoming April events, Pints for Pups, and our art auction fundraiser. Until then, for the Humane Society of Berks County, for Peggy Hentz, my name is Scott Yoder. Good evening, everybody. <laughs>